Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode we do have a Mars mission on its way and we'll take care of that in a bit but first we should have some rockets building in the meantime so that our queue is filled and we don't waste time and we do have uh, missions that could be accomplished. This lunar impactor is easy enough and lunar orbit as well so we are going to try to get into orbit around the moon and impact the moon with this mission and this mission has the smallest possible lunar orbiter that I could come up with early controllable core I guess I didn't really need four solar panels I could have done with two and possibly only two of the commutrons but anyway four commutrons four solar panels early controllable core which can handle 0.2 tons and uh, the amount of fuel that would get us there um, one point uh, sorry point one nine seven tons is the mass of the probe so just under the mass limit of the early controllable core and that gives us enough delta V to get into orbit around the moon and then crash into it. So first orbit then crash. It's got two instruments. It's got the micrometeorite detector and the orbital perturbation experiment. That's what we'll be doing. And the stage that will get it to the moon is this one with the Asterisk engine and it is using Irizene and N204. We now have the ability to make the thrusters burn MMH and N204 as well as Arizine and N204. So MMH and N204 I'm using for this probe, but I'm using Arizine down here and the thrusters are the same, so I don't have to have a different fuel for the thrusters. That's really handy. And so that is what it is. And the Able ABIS package can take care of five tons. So well enough to take care of the uh, 3.5 tons that that is. So we can package that up. Now the launcher. The launcher is a two-stage launcher. You'll note that the Asterisk engine, it doesn't actually have a time limit, but because it's an upper stage engine, it should have at least six minutes, uh, especially since it's hypergolic. Um, a lot of stages, the European Space Agency stages for the upper stages uh, tend to last quite a while, definitely more than six minutes. And that's a hefty thrust to weight ratio. But you'll notice that it has a lot more than it needs to get to the moon. In fact, uh, that could get into orbit around the moon and do other things. The reason is is it's going to complete orbit. These two stages are not going to get it to orbit necessarily. Uh, well, not, definitely not this payload. They're, it's basically an atlas. What I've got here is an atlas. Uh, we've got an LR-105 and then two LR-89s. And uh, the only difference between this and atlas is that I'm not lighting the LR-105 at the same time. I'm not lighting it at the at the launch so we're gonna wait on that that makes it slightly more efficient I think um, depending on how well I, yeah I think it does make it slightly more efficient because this has a horrible ISP at sea level the downside being that you don't have quite as much thrust to weight ratio at sea level but that's that should be alright so I think this will be optimal it, I did put attitude jets just in case we have a lighter payload later on and this can get it to orbit and maybe even tra uh, start its transfer off. This can orient it properly. So it's got a little bit of Arizine and 204 in there as well. Uh, we're using two Thor cores, uh, Thor avionics package, these. And that is why it is limited to the mass it is. Otherwise, it might be a slightly heavier rocket. But this is just under the limitations of our avionics right now. And as you can see, the first two stages will give us about 8,300 to 8,400 meters per second. We could burn um, more than a thousand of the next stage if necessary, but we shouldn't need to do that to get to orbit. We should burn less than a thousand. Now the trick with this is, I want to try and use my KOS script to launch this. That could go badly. That could go well. I don't know how um, the KOS script and test flight will like each other. Uh, if an engine goes out, for instance, but fortunately, there's a cheap rocket, and it, it still is aiming to fulfill a mission, and uh, there is the fact that it only takes 50 days to build it. So I'm going to build two, and one we'll use KOS on, and if that doesn't work, I'll just launch the other one myself. So let's do that. I'm going to build, and I'm going to build another one. If it turns out that we've filled the mission with the first one, we'll try and get the other one to... Uh, geosynchronous orbit. I don't know if I have quite enough juice for that, but but uh, it is a thing to aim for. 
Okay, here we are, and we're about to exit Earth SOI. Of course, the main challenge here is the electric charge, but communication as well. We've got both antennae open, so hopefully that will be enough. Okay, we should now be in solar SOI. Let's see now, our approach to Mars has us crashing into it, maybe? Yes, crashing into it, so that's all good. That's exactly what I want for now. Well, that'll be better as we go around what happened to our orbit. Wow, our Mars periapsis has gone all crazy. Great. Okay, we've completed... Well, we've completed Chibi Moon Dark Star. Maybe we should just try and launch that. I mean, this is all well situated right now. We shouldn't waste any time. Let's go back... Let's go back to the Space Center and try out that Chibi Moon Dark Star thing and see if it works with the KOS script. Okay, well, let us check how our alignment with the moon is. It's not, strictly speaking, necessary, but with a 54 degree relative inclination, I think I'll want to time warp a little bit to fix that. Now, the script I'm going to be using was written mainly for the Falcon 9. It's uh, I baseline it to the Falcon 9, so it's meant for a two-stage rocket to orbit and with stages similar to a Falcon 9, which means no really low thrust-to-weight ratios. This is a three-stage to orbit rocket, and uh, th th there's a way to handle that. Uh, it'll, it can take care of that part of it, but we'll have to see. i got to load it into the early controllable core, though... Oh, we're not on archive. Shoot. Uh, let me see, edit, whoop. let's see, edit dark star on local volume, and if I press paste and save, it says fails, files save failed, check space on device all the time. So, n uh, no. Okay, let me leave here and jump back and see if it'll be on the archive properly. Edit dark star on archive, okay. So, we've got this script, and I'm going to say target apoapsis and periapsis. I just leave at 270 since that's what it's tested for. The target inclination is fine. Uh, the first thrust to weight ratio on our mech jab, lots of windows. Uh, 1.26. Second thrust to weight ratio, 1.87. And the end of the second stage, really, I should go for. I, I guess I could go for that, but we don't actually burn through that. Let's just go for this one, uh, 5.44. There are fairings, and the target roll is correct based on our orientation. Okay. All right, let me verify that we're in the right orientation with the moon. I'm going to throttle myself down because... Uh, otherwise, it'll be throttled up when we get to orbit. And then I'm going to say run Dark Star, which is the name of this rocket. Okay, we have ignition. And launch. Okay, here we go. I can uh, abort the program if necessary, if I have time to do so. It's sort of got a more Falcon 9-ish trajectory to it, which means a little bit steeper than other rockets might take. I mean the script, of course. Okay, passing through max Q, everything looks nominal. There is a little bit of a wiggle to it, though. Nothing in the KSP likes to handle roll properly. But at least it is doing a reasonable job of it. Okay, first stage set. And... Uh-oh. Oh, it took too long to ignite that. Crikey. Hold on, I can help it out with uh, using the RCS system. 
Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, the delay isn't that long in the script. The delay is like, uh, what you got? Less than a second. But for some reason, it takes forever to ignite engines. Yeah, well, this isn't helping. Hopefully, it'll settle down. Well, it's zeroing in on it. Sort of. Okay, well, it's sort of stabilized, but can it make orbit still? Now, at this point, it doesn't really anticipate that it needs to pitch up more, unfortunately. That's not part of its programming. Interestingly, it's, it is pitched... Oh, wait. It was pitched higher because it was lacking in control. Uh, I was wondering why it was pitched higher than 26 degrees, which was its target pitch. And uh, it was because it wasn't able to pitch down anymore. It was maxed out. Okay, I think I'll take control here. Uh, let me crawl up first. Here. Oh, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. It's fine. I don't even need RCS, actually. Oh, maybe I do. Uh, okay. Well, mm, this way, please. Okay, that too, huh? All right. Mm, it's very stable if I go retrograde. No, that's not what I want to do, though. There we go. Well, we are not going to the moon with this one. But let me at least try to get it to orbit. Uh-oh, we've got overheating now. Um, solar panels, apparently. Our downward facing solar panels. Well, as I said in the VAB, we only need two. Uh, but I don't know if this bodes well. It, it doesn't look like we're gonna make orbit, really. We gotta start going up again. Don't suppose. Oh, we haven't done it in the upper atmosphere before. Let's transmit that before it all gets destroyed. We got some science. We got some science. Uh oh. Tilting down like that is bad. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, 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 no! Oh, what what got destroyed? Oh, another solar panel. Well, that's a problem. Uh, we're not gonna make orbit here. No. Okay, set. Yeah, I mean, 1,000 will not get us to orbit. I'll, I'll just ignite it, for the heck of it test it out, you know, make sure all the thrusters are firing. They are. But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it's a very definite problem. We just need to make sure that we can keep the orientation of the second stage through the, through the stage ignition, and then we'll be all right. Also, on the Astra stage, we need to have some downward-facing thrusters to settle the fuel down so that it can ignite. Okay, well, that's enough. This one is going to re-enter. Let's, uh... I'll make those edits on the... on the rocket that's cooking right now. Okay, well, I made the edits, and I decided to come back to our Mars probe still on its way to check up on it uh, during the 19 days it'll take to finish up building the next dark star and I noticed it's uh, decided to be in a very bad position with respect to the Sun in the meantime that's that's weird I did not expect it to be turned in this particular direction uh, this way okay well we've got another dark star complete let me tilt this in a better direction first, and then we'll try that launch out and see how that works. Alright, so let me just make the changes to the script that I need to do. Edit Dark Star. 
and this is still the right thrust to weight ratios or at least the ones I think that are right and somewhere down here there is a staging event and it's just uh, if the max thrust is less than one it uh, waits 0.2 seconds stages that'll uh, do the separation it's supposed to wait only 0.2 seconds and then stage but uh, that apparently isn't I can't tab in this okay RCS on I don't know if I should turn RCS off at the end of this maybe that's best let's turn RCS off after uh, it ignites the engine okay and then uh, we'll just leave everything else as is we'll see maybe 0.2 seconds is too quick possibly I don't know seems counterintuitive though that you'll lengthen the time lengthen the delay between the two staging events because it's too long anyway go throttle down there we're all lined up let's see I know I said I'd do uh, manual control on the second launch if the first launch didn't work but we might as well go ahead and try it with these cheap rockets anyway Off we go again. Yeah, it's got a bit of a roll wobble. Look at that. Look at how it's going back and forth there, and you can see the flames dancing. That's not great. Of course, the first stage worked fine last time, so I'm not expecting any problems, but then there's still test flight. There's still test flight. So you never know. Oh, by the way, I locked the probe's own fuel, the MMH and N204, but I can't lock the third stage fuel, the Astros fuel, because that's to be used to make orbit. At least a part of it is. Okay, here we go. RCS is on. Uh, it's not powerful enough. The RCS wasn't powerful enough. Dang it. I turned RCS off, but it might be able to hold it. It did a style flip, sort of? Okay, it did a style flip. That's what we'll call it. Um, yeah, it just... Of course, uh, it would probably stay steady if it wasn't deviating so much from the prograde vector, but... That's down to the programmed flight path. Vernier thrusters would save the day, of course, instead of these tiny little RCS thrusters. I guess I could put the LR-101s on, which are the Vernier thrusters for the Atlas, which actually go with this engine. Fairing staging occurs at 120 kilometers. That's just how it is in the program. Time to wap waps is surprisingly low though. That flip might have uh, thrown things off more than I would like. Okay, well, at least it's uh, increasing time to wap waps again, but I don't want that to go up too much. We really should have gotten to 120 kilometers earlier, so we're separating the fairings later as well. That's not very helpful. This should really be pitching down now. I don't think it appreciates how much power it's got at its disposal. Yeah, it's uh, pitching down a little bit too slowly. Ah. Yeah. Uh, I'll have to edit that. Yeah, the, the flip among other things caused it to have a little bit of a cow. Alright. Uh, separation. RCS on. Prograde. Um, actually, we could probably close to apoapsis, couldn't we? 
Yeah, uh, RCS off. Alright, here we go. Okay, Smart AI says it's having more trouble than it should. Uh, hold on. I thought the Astros had gimbling, by the way. Where is my gimbling? Okay, and off. So, 325 by 195, and we have plenty of Delta V to get to the moon, and of course we've got the locked fuel in the probe itself, so all is well. Uh, let's quickly check on the Mars probe just to make sure it's alright, and then we'll try to do the moon mission here. Okay, so yeah, it seems like a systematic thing where after I leave the probe, it somehow manages to be turned away from the sun. Um, each time it seems to find a way to not be facing the sun. I mean, a couple of days worth of delay should not cause it to do that. Um, and SAS is on, so persistent rotation shouldn't be in charge. It should just uh, keep it as is. Maybe I'll time warp just a little bit to make sure it's steady. Okay, it should be facing this way and recharging. It is recharging right now. And it should not turn in a way that does not face the sun. Let's conduct our moon mission and see if that remains true. Okay, we have a plot for the moon and we have reacquired connection. So let's have it point to the node. And of course we are free to make many corrections. Right now the electric charge situation is not good, but that's uh, because we have the extra core here anyway. We'll have to see about that. Also there is the time warp low power mode, so that can help. Okay, how's our engine? Very stable. Okay, let's hope it stabilizes and go. Let's stop it there. Seems like we should be hitting the moon's orbit by now. We might have even passed the proper point. Let me replot and figure that out. Well, I'll take that approach for now. 1,800 kilometers. It's pretty high, but that could help with communication, so... May not want to get too close to the moon initially. During time warp, we still have power loss. That's annoying. I could dump the able avionics package, then we'll pro probably be alright. But, I don't know. Maybe we can carry it along with us? Or, I think the depletion will be too much. Okay, well, we can't uh, make use of this 429 meters per second. I guess that's just gonna be how it is. Alright, um, let me unlock the fuels up here. If I can. Got that can't click on it issue again. Okay, now I can. Alright. I can't click on the early controllable core though. But I'll save that fuel for uh, doing the lunar impact part of it. Alright. Separation. Oh. Yeah, that's not good. Tell you what, uh, instead of uh, spinning, might not be uh, okay. Well, let's stop spinning anyway. Insufficient AV. Oh, because it's uh, on low power mode. Okay, it's recharging. Looks like we're sort of in a polar orientation, which is good for communication as well. Let's just say we bring our orbit all the way down. We'll stop it short of that, but you can see we've got a impact there and it only takes 862 meters per second so that's good we just need to get to periapsis now in fact let's do some science right now I think it'll count as long as we're in lunar SOI and major craters alright well we'll transmit that record impact data also probably done Let's just recycle that one. Okay, approaching periapsis. Looks like we have communication. Well, we definitely do. Earth is right there. 
Okay. So I'll just manually turn it. All right. Let's make orbit. Okay, we've achieved a nice sort of circular orbit around the moon. Let's see if that counts. Yeah, lunar orbit achieved. Very good. We are not going to be able to land on the moon, unfortunately. But let's see, record impact data, probably it's high over the moon still. So the biome, I don't know if uh, there's a different biome right now. Midlands, but we've already done it. Okay. All right, well, let's go back to the maneuver node and now crash into the moon. That should kick up some dust. All right. Delivery of some monomethyl hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide to the surface of the moon. Give it plenty of time to do science. Actually, we could, let's see if we can do some more science. Yeah, we can. Lowlands, transmit quickly, quickly. Court impact data. Really a different kind of impact data right now. Transmit. Probably we're not going to change biomes very quickly. It's all done. Good timing. And... Smack. All right, we have impacted the moon. And if we take a look at our notifications... Oh, okay. We don't get to check our notifications. Let's go back to the Space Center. Okay, now checking notifications. Lunar impact are complete. Lunar orbit complete. And many stages destroyed in the process. Okay, uh, while well, I'm satisfied with that, we got some funds. Let us turn to the Mars probe definitively now and try and complete that Mars flyby mission. Actually, you know what? Uh, it's going to take 181 days to get to Mars. I think I should build another one of these just in case this doesn't work for some reason. So I'm ready to edit it and uh, get another one out there. Because we only have the next, uh, when is the next uh, opportunity to send one? Oh, 644 days. Yeah, that's not going to work very well. Okay, well, I guess this is, this is it. Either this works or that contract is going to be failed. Well, it managed to stay with the solar panels facing the sun. That's positive. Let's continue time warping. Okay, looking good. We are now approaching Mars. Mars encounter 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, pause, 1, and within a day, and, okay, keep going, keep going. We're in. All right, Mars encounter, we still have communication, though it's a thousand second delay. We still have electric charge. All things are good. Okay. Now, let's, let's pull it away from Mars just a little bit. I mean, we can't really make orbit though, but we might as well leave it, you know, sort of around. I don't know, maybe we should just crash it into the thing. We do have locked fuel up here. I don't know. How much is that altogether? Uh, it's only a thousand. That's not gonna help us make orbit. We need two thousand for that. Unless we try and go through the Martian atmosphere, but this has no heat shield. And we'd be going pretty darn quick. Now, uh, you know what? I think I'll let it crash into Mars. It's not going to be too helpful otherwise, but I'll, I'll lift its orbit so that uh, it stays in the atmosphere for a significant amount of time. So we'll we'll pretend to error break it kind of thing. Okay, that'll be a pretend error break. But I'll deliberately put it too deep into the atmosphere so that it does crash. It'll probably just explode in the atmosphere anyway. 
Okay, well, we are in the SOI, so we should do science immediately. Let's log visual observations. It'll take uh, a while. Let's record impact data, so I'll record perturbation data, and log temperature. Okay, now we will time warp while those actually happen. Okay, close that. Telescope observations, 24 science. I'll wait till that data is fully uploaded. Okay, temperature scan high over Mars. Micrometeorite high over Mars, also 24 science. And gravity scan in space high over Mars's Midlands. Transmit. Very good. Now we have to get close to Mars. Let's um, see, what is the minimum? I think it was 20,000 kilometers. Then the contract will be fulfilled. So let's uh, zoom to 20,000 kilometers and verify the fulfillment of the contract. Very important. We've lost connection. Uh, I don't know why we've lost connection. We've lost power! Shoot, I wasn't oriented properly. Okay, I don't know what that's gonna do for a contract flyby thing. Shoot, I, I really needed to be a little bit more careful about such things. But we've done the scientific experiments, so maybe it'll be alright. Let's see. After we go around Mars, we'll probably... Well, we're not going to survive that. We're going to go in the atmosphere. Too bad we can't get any near to Mars science. Okay, uh, yes, we are below 20,000, and the Mars flyby mission is fulfilled despite the fact that we have no communication and no power. Well, I'm going to pretend it had an automatic program to hold retrograde through the atmosphere because I wanted to do that. And we'll see what happens now. Since the job is done, let's just see what happens at uh, this periapsis and when it explodes kind of thing. Okay, here we go. You know, I could have reoriented it towards the sun. I forgot about... Hold on. I can do that because it doesn't actually cost me any... Uh, I, well, actually, I don't... Maybe I can't. Is that right? Oh, I can't fire the RCS thrusters. Ha. Huh. Um, but I could tell it to force... Uh, the uh, Smart ASS can. So I'm going to use it to force roll. And maybe... Let me see where zero ends up. But I, I won't get science like this. I am just uh, revealing the deficits in remote tech. Uh, so I could, uh, if I could recharge, get some uh, close to Mars science. So I could force roll 180. And that should have the solar panels facing the sun so that we could recharge. If we time warp a little bit. I think. It's not really rolling, is it? It's very hesitant to roll, it seems. Oh, the bottom tank hydrazines are out. Hmm. That might be causing it a bit of a problem. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, I'll just leave it be. We're not going that fast. 5,400 meters per second. I've seen faster approaches to Mars, like in my... Mars missions in solar system colonization. Here we go. Solar panels are going first. Okay. Flippy. Well. That was the solar panels and the two antennae. Ah, 
our scientific instruments. It'd be hilarious if this accidentally landed on the on Mars. We don't have a contract for that though. We only have uncrewed moon landing. We don't have a Mars landing one. But I mean, in theory, it should explode on the surface if even if it survives the heating and all. These uh so. Note to self, these probe cores, really resilient to heat, practically heat shields. If we had put the instruments on the bottom here, and like, uh, had some way of protecting the solar panels, well, I mean, we, it could use its internal power. If we had these fully charged up, that would have been fine. We could have still done stuff, though uh, we would have to protect the antennae somehow. Those exploded. Not very helpful to have a probe that doesn't have any way of communicating. Okay, this has definitely gone to slam into the surface at some point, because it survived the heating. If we had communication, I, I could, and you know, of course electric charge, I could potentially try and soft land this with the Delta V that we have. As you can see, it, uh, the atmosphere can potentially slow us down to uh, less than 600 meters per second, but we have to be able to slow down very quickly, otherwise, you know, that happens. Okay, well, we completed the mission. And uh, actually, if a Mars impactor was a thing that we should do, uh, we would have done that too. Let's go back to Space Center. Alright, I think I'll call that a successful episode, despite certain failures. Uh, we do have early hydrolox engines in 368 days, but I think next time we're going to be trying to use the Chibi Moon Dark Star that we already have built uh, to do the geostationary orbit mission, and we'll try and see how that works, and then aim for an uncrewed moon landing, which is an interesting challenge. Actually, we should potentially uh, toss one of these chibi moon dark stars into orbit around the moon or a couple of them uh, to facilitate communication that might be a useful thing to do yeah so I'll think about that ahead of our moon landing but uh, I'll try and build the moon rocket uh, moon landing rocket in the next episode alright so on that note I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this episode if you did enjoy this episode please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time.